everyone. Um, we are um, the Pandemic Recovery and Future Threats team. And like Jenny said, we'll be talking to you about acceptance and attitudes towards COVID-19 vaccines, um, observations from community level virtual vaccine educational programming and on-site vaccination events in Lafayette County, Mississippi. Just a quick introduction of the team. My name is Travis Shot Hawkins. I am an MPH candidate in epidemiology at Columbia University. And I'm Lydia Coltai. I'm a community organizer based in Lafayette County, Mississippi. I've been living there for the past 11 years. And we just wanna give a quick shout out to our um, supervisor, Dr. Janine Abrams McLean, just for starting this initiative and like investing in our curiosities in this work. Um, a background. So people of color have long suffered an array of health inequities. Accordingly, due to a combination of factors, these communities have experienced higher hospitalization due to COVID-19, higher severity upon admission, and even higher rates of death. Vaccination against COVID-19 is currently one of the strongest resources in public health to drive pandemic recovery and prepare for future communicable threats. Unfortunately, COVID-19 vaccination hesitancy and misinformation remain one of the biggest post threats for individual participation in this resource. More particularly, in the start of our study in August of this year, we noticed that Mississippi was ranked last um, regarding vaccination rates amongst all the states in um, D.C., but 34.5% of its residents fully vaccinated. Um, currently, that number has written risen to about 44, 45% due to the um, new Delta variant. And below you can see we, um, we stratified our, our scope to in Mississippi and you can see the demographic below. The problem that we want to help mitigate is that this is clearly a public health equity. Since black and brown communities are statistically more vulnerable to COVID infection and mortality, we really need to make them aware and observe why they are not participating in this vaccine or this public health resource rather. And we did this through the following three activities listed here. So the way we built our base population network um, the topic of pandemic recovery and future threats is really big. So to narrow down our focus, we talked to different community organizations that have been supporting people during the pandemic with getting basic needs met, just to get a sense of what the needs of the community were. And I really wanna highlight Ms. Lena Wiley of Interfaith Compassion Ministries, who shared a lot of stories with us about how COVID impacted the community and really encourage us to focus on vaccination education and um, promoting vaccination in the community to end the threat of the pandemic. So some of the activities that we participated in with the community, we really chose to amplify and support on the ground efforts of community leaders that were already happening. So we joined a couple of virtual events, a Zoom and a couple of Facebook Live events hosted by the NAACP and the Women's Auxiliary of the local Missionary Baptist Church. We also participated in a couple of Teletown Halls um, hosted by Fair Count. And then um, finally, we um, supported a couple of efforts to host local vaccination events in the community where we also distributed our survey and an educational infographic, which we're about to talk about. Did we lose Trey Rashad? 
Lydia, maybe, maybe go on. Okay. Let me just see if I can pull up the slides and share. Sorry, we're having a, sorry for a slight technical difficulty. Hi, can you all hear me now? Yes, but yes. you need to reshare your slides. Okay, no problem. Sorry about the no gift difficulties, you all. all. Um, like Lydia said, we use these infographics as a resource to give the community to lay down the facts and debunk myths about vaccines um, in a quick manner and accessible manner. And we also included a barcode that linked them to a survey where we could collect information from them and observe what was making um, this the case. Um, through our qualitative data methods, we primarily um, collected um, observations of attitudes and acceptance through our project activities as well as the survey. And the survey was also our main source for quantitative data methods where we um, looked at measurable outcomes as in COVID confidence in COVID-19 vaccines and COVID-19 vaccination concerns, um, which were based off of an extensive literature review. And we analyzed these measurable outcomes across the um, covariates that you see here. And we used a multivariable logistic regression model for the analysis. So we wanted to share just a few quotes from the findings that we had. Um, at one of the events we went to, it was a lot of pastors speaking. And so one of the things shared was my first responsibility as a pastor is to keep my people safe. Also that preachers must preach vaccination. Um, some of the questions that we heard at a couple of the events were, um, should you get the vaccine if you've already had COVID? And also should people with health and weight issues get the vaccine? We also observed some of these observations in our survey where we left a comment box for people to tell us their personal stories, whether it be with them or a friend or a family member um, regarding COVID vaccine hesitancy. And the first quote really struck me because it really speaks to like this plague of misinformation that we have going on. There's too many resources for information and they're saying totally different things. And that's something we have to strive for unified in information about vaccinations in general. So for the quantitative data analysis, like I said, we um, collected a sample of 202 people. Um, you can see the race and gender breakdown um, above. And again, we ran a multivariable logistic regression across these covariates and after adjusting for each covariate, um, we noticed some interesting associations. One, there exists a positive association between age and vaccine confidence, meaning that the as age went up, vaccine confidence got higher and vice versa as it went lower, it got lower. Um, men had approximately 1.5 times the odds of reporting low vaccine confidence than women. Um, there exists a positive association between education level and vaccine confidence. So also as education went up, vaccine confidence went up and there was actually no association at all or at least statistically significant association between race and vaccine confidence. And all these associations had a p-value less than 0 0.5, 0 0.05, I mean. Um, this is like sample of like, not associations, but just basic statistics. We asked them to select all of the concerns that apply to them. And you can see that it doesn't add up to 100% um, in total. You can just see where people felt um, most concerned. And the average vaccine confidence rate for the whole um, sample was 3.15, so about neutral confidence for vaccinations. Um, the top concerns were regarding possible side effects, um, planning to wait and see if the vaccine was safe, and some people just didn't believe they needed the vaccine in general. So these are this is still a work and a problem that we have to work towards in progress. Um, some of the limitations from a community organizing perspective, uh, I had to 
start doing most of the organizing from a distance due to a cross-country move. We weren't able to get communication with all the groups we wanted to work with. And we also had fewer vaccination events than we wanted to organize due to lack of available pharmacists. Um, from a scientific research standpoint, um, the study lacks um, external validity by design because it's an observational study. We didn't have a counterfactual population to um, compare it to. Um, the sample size, although we were shocked by the number of people who participated, it was still um, small in terms of statistical power. And of course, with any observational say you have um, the potential of response bias, which people provide information that they think is socially acceptable and not really representative of their views. Um, lessons learned. Um, from this project, we learned that there's a huge need for more culturally relevant and accessible public health messaging and programming targeting minority populations. There's a critical need to um, integrate community building and promote in promoting and mobilizing civic engagement. And these rifts and barriers that we come across, they've existed for a long time. So it's just gonna take more time for our labor to bear fruit. And um, since we're just about out of time, you can see what some of our desired next steps are here on the slide but this is very much work that needs to be continued, so.